There is no way Katie Luckcraft could have gone to cheering practice when she was sick. I would want to stay home on the weekends and not go to my cheer competitions or that kind of thing. Over two years, Katie missed 100 days of school. I would wake up in the morning and be like, I don't think I can make it today. I'm just going to like stay in bed. On the days she did go to school, it was tough to make it through the day. She was dizzy and faint all the time. She would have hot and cold sweats. She, her heart would be racing. It was like really hard to watch my sister. I didn't know what she was going through and I was like really scared. One of my doctors explained it as walking wounded. I look fine, but I'm not fine inside. And a lot of people pushed me and said, oh, you're, she's depressed or your daughter's just going through something. Katie's mom, Terry, knew her daughter was not just going through something. Her search for help took them to Mayo Clinic, where a multidisciplinary team of experts led by pediatrician Dr. Phil Fisher cared for Katie. POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. To us as physicians, it's a problem of the involuntary or autonomic nervous system not regulating the flow of blood very well. To patients, it's misery. Diagnosing POTS can be tricky. Doctors look for symptoms like Katie's, plus there's one other obvious clue. Increased heart rate when you stand up from a resting position. You see, your heart pumps blood to the brain when it beats. If there's a sudden and dramatic increase in pulse rate, not enough blood gets to the brain and you get dizzy. So the increase in pulse and dizziness upon standing are keys for diagnosis. The first thing most important for physicians, nurse practitioners, or seeing these patients is to listen and understand them, to realize this is a real problem. These kids are not just making it up. It's not all in their heads. They're not crazy. As Katie learned, many people and even doctors still don't understand that POTS exists. It was first identified in the 1990s, but it's been around long before that. The history of POTS is actually fascinating, and I would say it's gone parallel with the history of the Mayo Clinic. In the early days, Dr. William Worrell Mayo examined young men enlisting in the Civil War. Some of them had trouble with fainting and dizziness, which disqualified them from service. It's referred to as Civil War Syndrome. At that time, some said, oh, they're just scared, oh, they're just nervous, they have anxieties, or they're afraid of being in the military. But as we look back, we can see very similar descriptions of Civil War syndrome with chronic fatigue and dizziness and nausea to what we now recognize as autonomic dysfunction or POTS. We were going to get to the bottom of it, explain how we were going to see all these different specialists. Lee Acey, the director of Mayo Clinic Center for Social Media, has worked with Dr. Fisher to increase awareness of POTS. She'd been living in pain for almost like nine months. He found an opportunity to use social media to help teens with POTS get exactly the treatment they need. The thing about social media is that you can get connections with other people who've had the same condition. You can also make the expertise of physicians like Dr. Fisher available as a resource for those who are looking for uh, information, who are desperately searching for information. People like this mom of a teen with POTS who saw a Mayo Clinic video about it on the internet. She then contacted Lee, who connected her with Dr. Fisher. Lee then helped that family spread the word about POTS via Mayo Clinic sharing Mayo Clinic blog and Mayo's YouTube channel. Dr. Fisher is still telling that uh, this has played a role in an awful lot of uh, patients coming to see him. Recovery from POTS takes time, sometimes years. Treatment includes drinking lots of water and eating salty foods to bolster blood vessels, some medications, and exercise. With help, almost all kids with POTS will get better. And now for about 15 years, we've been able to recognize it in teenagers, diagnose it, and provide treatment so people like Katie can get better and do well in life. I think before I, I would let my symptoms like kind of run my life and now I, I'm in control, I'm driving the bus to my life. Mm -hmm.